Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I'm your boy, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. The only daily Gamecock women's basketball coverage across the universe. The only one, the only one. If you're new to this, this channel, if you're new to Captain Will, you are now, you are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your boy, Captain well, we got a good one today, y'all. I said we got a good one today, y'all. We are talking about who has the easiest, who has the easiest path to the NCAA championship this upcoming season? And who has the hardest path this upcoming season? Basketball is in the air. I can smell it. I can smell it. I can taste it. It's October the 12th, 2023. We play Rutgers exhibition game in 10 days, y'all. 10 days. 10 days we have an exhibition game. Real basketball. Real basketball on a basketball court. We're going to see the new look Gamecocks real soon. And then, oh, oh, by, oh, by the way, then November 6th. November 6th on ESPN at 1,300 hours. 1,300 hours. 1 o'clock for my civilian fans. 1,300 hours. We playing Notre Dame in Paris on ESPN. Oh, it's, it's on, y'all. It is on. It is on. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. So in order to get ready, we because because I did this I did this video a while back about a month ago did a video a while back talking about the the uh, um actually I talked about LSU schedule and I talked about how garbage it was right talked about LSU schedule how garbage it was and we want to and, and people have their own interpretation of schedules right LSU had a three hundred and twentieth ranked schedule last year but they won a championship. That 320th rank schedule made them a number three seed in the in, in the tournament, even though they had only lost two games during the season. But they used that number three seed and won the chip. Okay? Won the chip. Now, now, now this year right here, this year right here, I mean, LSU right now is number one in the in every basically every poll you want to name. But has they had had are, are they using a similar a similar formula that they used last season where they're gonna play a garbage schedule use that garbage schedule to get a uh, uh, one through three top seed and, and and hopefully win the chip again let's check it out let's check it out LSU 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 like I said was number three seed last season. Even though they had a 2082 record, ended up winning the championship. All right, and they, their schedule was ranked 320. Now this upcoming season, they have another garbage schedule. It's not as garbage as it was last year. Not as garbage as it was last year, but it's still garbage. So it, it, they have uh, Colorado and Virginia Tech in November. That so that helps some. Uh, they play a whole lot of. Uh, teams that are outside the net to net 100 this upcoming season. So the net 100 is basically like a ranking. Think of it in terms of a ranking uh, of all the college basketball schools, all of them, not just like a football. You have like a top 25 and then that's basically it. You know what I'm saying? So, but in basketball, you rank damn near all of them. You rank all the division one schools. So most of the teams that, LSU is playing or out that top 100. All right. Most of the teams, with the exception of uh, Virginia Tech, who's going to be really good. Virginia Tech going to be really good. Uh, Virginia. Uh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. And I know a lot of people say, watch me, it's like, you be crapping on LSU a lot. I, so, sometimes I do. I do. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying, don't play nobody. Don't play nobody. The schedule is garbage. Last year was 320. This year would be probably around 300, 303, somewhere around there. The schedule is garbage. And this year again, they'll probably, maybe they might lose a game. They might lose a game during the regular season. They'll lose a game in the SEC championship. And then, you know, so they'll probably be 
another 28 and 2, and probably another uh, third, third seed because they the schedule so bad. So, and, and you know what? It didn't matter last year. It didn't matter last year. It did not matter last year. They won the championship off a, a, a garbage schedule, third seed. But I'm just saying, if the goal is to win a championship, you want to be, I, I, I think, a number one, number two seed. So your, your, your path thing is tough, right? That's the goal. That's the goal, right? LSU did not rock with that last year. They still won the chip, so more power to them. I just think you be to to to, to be the best. You gotta play the best. I'm just saying. So LSU uh, got a uh, gonna have a because their schedule so garbage. I think that's their their path. Even though they got the dream team, gonna be tough for this upcoming season. Another team I talk about is a team that actually beat South Carolina last year. And that's Iowa. That Iowa Iowa Hawkeyes. Now, Iowa is led by Caitlin Clark, the poster girl for the whole for the whole college basketball scene. I just read this morning she got a NIL deal with 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 State Farm. We're gonna be doing commercials with Jake from State Farm. Like Caitlin Clark will be everywhere this upcoming season, everywhere. So she's gonna be putting up astronomical numbers once again. Astronomical numbers. You know why? You know why? She's a really good player. She's a really good player. I ain't no shade to Caitlin Clark whatsoever. She's a really good player. Going to be a top three pick next year in the, in the WNBA draft if she decides to go because she's, be, real talk, she's making more money uh, in at Iowa than she's going to be making in the W. They doesn't say that, and this is beginning that, which is crazy, but that's that's college basketball as it is right now. But the schedule's garbage. The schedule's garbage. I mean, it, it, it's just that. Other than, uh, you know what? But they are playing Virginia Tech. In Charlotte, November 9th, gonna be a big game. Hell, probably the biggest game of the season uh, before the tournament. Now, how do you have the? And let's really think about that. Your biggest game of the season, November the 9th, here in Charlotte, up until the tournament. That tells how garbage the season is. That tells how garbage the, the schedule is. I mean, is I mean, Kansas State. Kansas State might be the only team that might be ranked during the season. During the season. So, you know, like, again, you know, shade to Caitlin Clark. She's going to put up amazing numbers. They ain't playing nobody. Iowa ain't playing nobody. They ain't playing nobody. They, they beat South Carolina. They beat South Carolina. And they did. They did. But damn, they don't play nobody. But we're going to see old Caitlin Clark after 25 point shot, 10 threes from, from the logo and blah, blah, blah. All that. But they playing Johnson C. Smith and, 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 and Tatum Tech and, and Midlands Tech. They ain't playing nobody. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So they're going to have a and, – and, and if I was the number one seed this upcoming season and ain't played nobody other than Virginia Tech and a Kansas State who might be ranked, Oh no no no! Yeah, that, that just can't happen. That just can't happen. That just this just can't happen. Mm -mm. Um, so we're talking about uh, Iowa, LSU. Those that's number one, number two. You know who's gonna have a, a, a who has a tough path? Who has a tough path? UConn. UConn has a tough path. UConn do not slouch with the schedule. They don't slouch with the schedule. They don't. First off, their non-conference schedule is, is nice. They're going to play some tough teams. Obviously, they're playing South Carolina. They're coming, up, they're coming over to, to Columbia. They're going to come over to Columbia. They're coming over to South Kakalaka. They're coming over to visit Colonial Life Arena. They're coming to do that. So that's going to be a huge game. But with that being said, they play some, some, some – seven of the UConn's first ten opponents were in the uh, – Last season's uh, bracketology, I don't know if ESPN want to call it, you know, not last season, latest. So updated version of Charlie Cream's bracketology, seven of the last ten. That's a lot. Seven of the, last, seven of the first ten opponents for UConn appears in the updated version of bracketology. So they in a, UConn is not afraid. Now they got Asia Fudd, they got Paige Beckers, they got Leah Edwards. So they're not, they're not scared whatsoever. They ain't, they ain't scared. They're going to say, yo, we're going to play some teams, and then we get the conference play. Conference play ain't going to be as hard because UConn's conference uh, schedule ain't as difficult as a non-conference schedule. But they're going to play some teams before the tournament. 
And all that's going to uh, pay dividends once they get to the tournament. They will be rewarded with a top top level uh, seed. UConn got a really good team. When we play UConn in February, that's going to be, as the old folks say, a barn burner. That's going to be something. That's going to be something. They're going to be playing some teams. You're talking about North Carolina. They're playing Louisville. They're going to be playing Texas. They're playing us. They got some teams that's going down. UConn, there's going to be something to watch this upcoming season. UConn going to have a, a nice schedule. I can always talk about South Carolina and the schedule that we have. I've done that before, but I'll talk a little bit about it right now. South Carolina's schedule, non-conference schedule, is elite. I'm just saying. The, the SEC schedule is elite. We are playing really tough teams this upcoming season. We play really tough teams this upcoming season. No, we won't be undefeated like a LSU or a Iowa or something to that effect because those teams ain't playing nobody. But because, because yo, we open it up with Notre Dame. Then we go down with Maryland. No, I can't schedule. We got UConn. We playing what, what, what? North Carolina. We playing Duke. We playing uh, uh, South Dakota State. We playing that ugly orange team, Clemson. We playing. I mean, come on. We playing a lot of school. We we are playing top level teams this upcoming season. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So we ain't. We're gonna lose some games, y'all. We're gonna lose some games. Hell, it might be a. We, we, we're playing Notre Dame and Maryland back to back. We got an easy game against Clemson right after that. Then we play South Dakota State in North Carolina. That's November. That's November. We'll probably be playing one, two, three, four teams out of the first five teams on this schedule who are ranked. Let's say that right there. Let's say that. Four out of the first five teams for the South Carolina Fighting Gamecocks will be most likely ranked in November. If I pull up, if I pull up LSU, their, four, their first five games, first five games, they are playing Colorado in Las Vegas. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be an amazing experience. I, I'm just saying Las Vegas is my favorite city in the country. It's going to be awesome. Um, but they're playing Colorado. Then they're playing Queens. Queens University is up here in Charlotte. Now, you know good and damn well Queens ain't got no business playing no LSU. They ain't no business playing LSU. So they're playing Queens. Then they're playing Mississippi Valley State. Then they're playing Kent State, Southeast Louisiana. So they first five teams probably going to be ranked 299th or worse. You know what I'm saying? Other than Colorado. Colorado got a, a pretty good team. Colorado got a, good, a decent team. And they're playing them first. Okay, in the Hall of Fame series in Vegas. So they get it. But then they got buys. You call it buys. You call it, you know what? Don't call it buys. Call it exhibitions. Call it exhibitions. Queens, Mississippi, Valley State. I'm up here in Charlotte. Queens need to be playing West Charlotte. Need to be playing uh, 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 Mallet Creek. Playing teams like that. They need to be better playing no LSU. Then Mississippi Valley State. In Kent State, oh my God! If I just keep going, Southeast Louisiana, Texas Southern, Niagara, Niagara, man. I, let me just stop right there. Let me just stop right there. And this ain't the, the LSU bash day, but I'm just saying, ain't playing nobody. Ain't playing nobody. I mean. UConn got a nice schedule. Obviously, South Carolina got a nice schedule. Tennessee! Tennessee got a nice schedule. If Tennessee played the caliber that we think Tennessee going to be, Tennessee would be a top four, top five seed themselves. Tennessee opens against Florida State, Indiana, and then play Oklahoma, play Notre Dame. And this is all before SEC time. Where they're going to play South Carolina twice. Uh, I just, I, I hate, I hate, this is what I hate. I hate when I, when I see all American teams, all, you know, first team, second team, what is this? I hate, I hate when I see all that. Because in my mind, 
If you play in top teams, your stats gonna drop. Your stats gonna drop. It's just, it's just, it's just what it is. You playing better teams, so your stats gonna drop. You playing worse teams, your stats gonna look amazing. And I just did a snapshot of the first five games for LSU. So the first five games of LSU, you're going to think Anissa Morrow is the next coming of Candace Parker. Because the stats going to be amazing. You're going to think Angel Reese is going to average 20 and 20. Because they're playing Queens, New York, Queens, North Carolina. Because they're playing uh, uh, Southeast Louisiana. But then you're going to think, oh, what happened to South Carolina? Oh, what happened to South Carolina? You know what happened to South Carolina? They actually played some teams. They actually opened up with Notre Dame, played Maryland. They actually playing South Dakota State. You know what I'm saying? That's, but the narrative is going to be, the narrative is going to be, because it's going to be all on the social media. It's going to be all over. Everywhere it's going to be, the LSU is killing teams by 50. That's what's going to be the first five games. So, but, but the narrative will also be, if South Carolina lose, just say for, for, for 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 uh for whatever might happen, we we'll say South Carolina loses Notre Dame, they lose in Maryland. So South Carolina zero and two, zero and two to start the season. But at zero and two, they play in possibly two top ten ranked teams. But LSU played Colorado, Queens, Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State. What will be the narrative? Oh, South Carolina, they lost so much. They lost so much, and they ain't, ain't going to do nothing this upcoming season. That's going to be the narrative. That's That will be the narrative. Has Don lost her touch? I have landed her Don. If the goal was to continually go, if the goal is to be undefeated in the regular season, South Carolina will be playing Charleston Southern. We'll be playing a Kent State. We'll be playing teams that they know they no battle. No, no battle at all. And then play maybe one decent team in the non-conference and then play the SEC schedule. The SEC is tough enough to do that, right? The SEC is tough enough to do that. Because the SEC, we, we're going to be playing Kentucky twice. We got Tennessee twice. got Ole Miss. You got, you got, we got LSU. We got, we got a lot of tough teams. Mississippi, uh, um, Mississippi State. We got a lot of tough teams. We won't be going to seek no. Who, who goes to seek UConn? You know what I'm saying? Who goes to seek Maryland? Who who goes to seek those teams? When you already gonna be playing LSU at Baton Rouge, who goes to seek those teams? Real talk. Just look at the LSU schedule. The first game that they have the potential to lose. And this is a retooled South Carolina squad. The first game that LSU has the potential to lose would be Thursday, January 25th at 8 o'clock on ESPN. That's against the game cost. And it's not because of what they have returning back. It's just, I mean, I'm just, I'm talking about recruit for recruit, star for star, and, and schedule for schedule. So the easiest path. I'm saying the easiest path right now for 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 uh to get to the championship, the easiest path to get to the championship for me, for me, is LSU. The easiest. They have the easiest path to the championship this upcoming season. And why are you talking about that, Captain? I say they have the easiest path to the championship season, even though they're playing, they're playing a bum schedule. They're going to go into the season ranked number one. They will go into the season ranked number one. They're not going to lose that ranking. Only way they're going to lose that ranking if they if we beat them on January 25th, uh, maybe, hell, Maybe Tennessee on February 25th. And then you got the SEC championship. They're not going to lose no any games in November. Virginia Tech will give them a run. They'll give them a run November 30th. But I'm like, yo, this. So they'll go undefeated. Because right now, going into the season, LSU will be number one. They'll be favored against South Carolina when we play January 25th. They'd be favored. So they, if they beat us, 
they'll go into the SEC uh, tournament undefeated. Unless it's a slip up against, like I said, against South Carolina or against Virginia Tech. Okay? Then they go into the SEC tournament. Then they play some top-level teams back-to-back -back or whatever the case may be. Okay? Then they go into the tournament. So they have to be a number one seed. They have to be a number one seed. They have to. If they don't, if they don't, if, if they're undefeated or lose one game, they'll be a number one seed. Unless we boat race them again like we did last year. They'll be number one seed. So they're probably gonna have to play two teams. Two teams along the way in the champ in the tournament. Maybe three, but most likely two teams, the quality of them. So yeah, they got the easiest path to the tournament, to the championship. They just pass to the cha championship. Because of their ranking right now and this sorry schedule they got upcoming season. Now we could change that. Obviously, we could change all that, just like we did last year when we was one, you know, we was number one, they was number two, and we beat the snot out of them. You know, and because because then it was like, damn, they really didn't play nobody. They were not the number one team, so they dropped. And then we came tournament time, SEC tournament, they lost to Tennessee. So they dropped some more. And then we got to the tournament, and it was third, third seed. You know what I'm saying? But right now, right now, currently, that's how I see it. Y'all let me know if I'm off base. Just let me know. The hardest path, the hardest path, this upcoming season for a championship, and you know I'm going to say South Carolina. I'm going to say South Carolina. I have to say South Carolina. They have one of the toughest schedule, probably top three schedule in the country. They, were, they lost seven players, lost all five starters, so and, and playing a bomb schedule. So the toughest path this upcoming season is South Carolina to a championship. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Now, I will say this right here. South Carolina will be the most prepared team come tournament time because they will go through their, their, their lumps throughout the season. And we will see who can play with, with who can play with who, who. And we'll see if if the, the, the recruiting rankings actually live up to what I think they will. But South Carolina going to have a tough, tough pair this upcoming season. South Carolina will. Uh, 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 UConn will. Even though you can, and, and we talk about Paige and we talk about Asia. We talk about Leah. We talk about those players. But, but Paige and, and Asia has not been healthy. And I know that uh, uh, Paige has been clear for all contact, but she ain't been healthy. Asia ain't been healthy. What if one of those go down? I know they recruit well. I know they're going to, uh, Gino is an awesome coach and all this and that, but they playing a tough schedule. They playing a tough schedule. Their path is difficult. A uh, 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 Tennessee path is difficult. Uh, Notre Dame is a difficult game, a difficult season. They have a difficult schedule. Because they open up with us. Those would be two top 10 teams locking up first game of the season on ESPN with all the eyes watching. And they playing. No, they ain't playing us. They playing Tennessee. And they playing UConn. The best playing the best. I need to get LSU on board with that. I need you the national champion. If you're the poster, I need LSU and Iowa. Because Iowa right behind in terms of getting to the chip. Because they bomb, they they sorry ass schedule as well. But I need those teams to get in, in, get into the to the to the mix of playing great teams. Because that's what we need as college basketball fans. That's what we need. That's how we get the the the, the why 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 was such you know the whole world was captivated. Why the whole world was captivated with women's college basketball late in the season? Yeah, we had March Madness. We had that, but we had best playing the best. So in order to keep that 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 momentum going, in order to keep that momentum going, they have to play. They have to play better teams. We would love to have Iowa playing. Hell, what about Iowa playing LSU to open the season? How about that? You got Notre Dame and South Carolina playing. How about you do that that remix of what had happened last time, and you will have a billion people watching the game with Iowa and LSU opening the season at a neutral site. You want to have 50,000 people at a game, that's what you do. But you don't avoid each other. 
You don't avoid each other. You don't avoid playing top team. You get in the mix like South Carolina, you play top teams. You get in the mix like Tennessee, you play top teams. You get in the mix like UConn and, and Notre Dame and play top teams. That's what makes this sport grow. Not playing no Mississippi Valley State. No. Not play. This is what you do. Athletic directors, not just try to stay undefeated and average 50 and 50. No. Play the top teams. That's what the fans want. That's what we want. Regardless if I'm a South Carolina fan or not, that's what we want. So, to recap, the easiest path to a championship is LSU and Iowa. Because they don't play no damn body. They don't play no damn body. And the hardest path this upcoming season is South Carolina, UConn, and you can throw Notre Dame in there, and you can throw Tennessee. This concludes another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I'm your boy, Captain Will. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I continue to bring you that gospel, that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. You are now rocking with the best. Since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your boy, Captain Will. Let's go. Oh, J-Rock, that is